This is part three of the Node-RED basics with Home Assistant. We're going to cover MQTT receives, MQTT sends, reusable flows, and possibly more. Let's get to it. So first I want to talk about the layout of MQTT, Node-RED, and Home Assistant. Even though many of you may have MQTT, Node-RED, and Home Assistant installed in the same Raspberry Pi or server, they are separate components and do not rely on each other. For instance, you could have Node-RED on one computer, you could have MQTT on another Raspberry Pi, and you could have Home Assistant running on another device. All in your network and say someone may do that for redundancy purposes. So MQTT is the messaging broker that works in the middle between all of this and allows Tasmodo to talk to Home Assistant and vice versa with all the communications through the various topics, publishes, and subscribes. So in a perfect world, you want to go the shortest path. In the previous videos, we showed how to turn on and off a light through Home Assistant. Now, the one problem with that is it's going around the world. Because basically, Node-RED tells Home Assistant, then Home Assistant has to tell MQTT to tell Tasmodo to turn the light off. You have a much quicker response if you would have Node-RED tell MQTT, which would directly tell Tasmodo to turn that light off. And vice versa, when you're receiving data from a Tasmodo switch or device, such as a temperature or humidity, you would want to receive it straight from MQTT and not from Home Assistant, which also removes less pieces for less things to break. And technically, you don't even need Home Assistant running. You would only need Node-RED and MQTT running along with the various Tasmodo devices to turn on or off those switches or receive that data. So to accomplish this, we're first going to show a simple flow with how to turn a light on and off. You go into Node-RED, look under the output section, there will be a MQTT node. Drag it out. Double click on it. If you don't have a server populated here, you will need to enter your MQTT server information. That would consist of a name, which you can give it any name you want, the server IP address. You can leave all this default unless you have some different settings. And under the security settings, you'll have your ID and password if you use authentication on your MQTT server. So to turn off this blue light in the bottom right hand corner, first we need to grab topic for the blue light it's going to be power one as you can see here when i toggled it we have stat mcp test one power one we'll copy it out but we will need to change it to a command since we're going to be sending a command of power one to this device paste and we'll change this to command for power one we won't want to use retain we'll give it a name blue led so now we have the blue led MQTT output. Remember we did before, we used the inject node to do some temporary testing and some actionable ways of doing things in Node-RED. So as you'll notice, you're probably already looking at, there's one problem. There's no payload to say what you want to send to Power1. Do you want to send an off, an on, or a toggle? Well, that's the actual message you're sending over to the blue LED. In this timestamp, inject node we're not going to send over the timestamp that's defaulted we're going to send over a string and the string of the payload we're going to send over toggle leave the topic blank we're not going to do repeats not going to do any schedules or anything we'll call this one send toggle and then we'll deploy and we will throw a debug in here just so you can see the message because debug defaults to the message payload. We'll connect this up. We'll also show the node status. We'll deploy. And now when we hit the action button on the inject, it turns the blue LED off. We can hit the button again. It'll toggle. And also you can see it sends the toggle command and sends that over to that topic. It's a real simple way we sent over a toggle message to power one using MQTT and we did not go through Home Assistant as a middleman. We went straight through MQTT to send over that command straight to Tasmodo. So what about receive? How do we receive data from MQTT into Node-RED? Well, to do that, we'll drag in an input and make sure it has your server selected that you configured before. What I've configured in this video is there's a capacitive touch button next to the ring of LEDs 
that when I touch it, it sends over a publish of MCP test switch and the number two for the toggle. So we'll take this topic, paste it into here. We'll just call it touch input. And we'll pipe it straight into a debug just so we can see the output come through on the debug message. We'll hit deploy. We'll flip over to the debug. And now when we push the button, you can see it receives the two each time I push the button. You could use that to say when you, a light turns off and on. So to do that for a light on my fan I have in here that also has a light, if we copy out the stat of the topic and the power, bring it in here, we'll drag out another MQTT input, paste it in here, we'll call it bench fan status. And we'll tie that into our debug. So now you can actually see due to that being a retained power message, as soon as I deployed it, because I use power retain on that Tasmodo device, you can see it sent over the off. If for instance, I wanted to synchronize devices up, I could take this same message and simply pipe it over to the blue LED that we used before and deploy it. And now when I toggle this, you'll notice they're out of sync right now, but once they get into sync, they'll both turn on and off as I toggle them. I turned off, and then now they can see they're both on. It's a real simple way to do a receive and then output to MQTT through a device. Now another type of receive, say you have a temperature or humidity sensor, as you can see here, I have a BME 280, had the temperature, humidity, and the pressure. I want to see the, the humidity. To see this, if you use the telemetry topic, you can see in the tele sensor topic, it has the BME 280 and it has the temperature and the humidity and the pressure. So what we'll do is we'll copy these out. We won't copy the BME 280 or temperature just yet. We'll do an MQTT input. We're going to subscribe to the telemetry message I just copied. Now, since it's in JSON, we scroll down to the function section. There's a JSON node. Connect these up. Go into the JSON and change the action to always convert to JavaScript object. And hit done. Now, pipe this into the debug and deploy it. Now you'll notice already since I've deployed it down the right hand side in the debug if you click on this little triangle open it up you'll see BME 280 object the temperature humidity and pressure. If you want the humidity you click the first little button here it will copy the path to your clipboard. So we'll drag out one debug and we'll paste this into here. It automatically puts payload BME 280 humidity, so you don't have to type any of that. We'll also check node status. Hit done. Make sure and connect it up. We'll do another one for the temperature. We'll go back we'll copy the temperature path. We'll paste it in. We'll delete this one out and we'll deploy. And then as soon as the telemetry message fires, it will convert the JSON out for the humidity and temperature and paste it to our debugs. 
and now you can see 70.3 and 57.8. Now you could actually take some logic, you could do a switch connect this up and let's say we want to turn a light on or for instance what I do what I use this for is to turn on a vent when the humidity gets high enough so we'll take this humidity we'll paste it into the switch we'll say when the humidity changes and it is greater than or equal to a number of 85 percent we won't you don't have to put percent and do an add is less than or equal to 84 and we'll change it to a number we'll give it a name of over 85 percent So now you have greater than or equal to 85 and less than or equal to 84. So what you would need if you want to turn the vent on is you'd want to do a change. We'll move some of this out the way. So we'll set the message payload to on, we'll change it to set on, done. We'll copy and we'll paste this one because we'll also need a set off to turn the vent off when the humidity level falls below. Connect it up. We'll just use this test blue LED as our send. Of course, this would typically be your vent power topic to turn the vent off and on. We'll connect them up and then we'll deploy. So to go over what happens is every time the telemetry fires, which is configured in the settings in Tasmodo, it is default to 300 seconds you can change it down to about 10 seconds. A message will fire off. It gets The JSON gets converted. There's a decision made whether the humidity is high enough or not. If it's high enough, it follows out. It changes the payload to on and sends that payload over to the vent. Once the message fires again and the humidity falls below 85%, the payload will change to off and then sends the command to turn off to the vent. It's a really easy way to set a vent in your bathroom for, especially when you have a significant other that always forgets to turn the vent on and the humidity just builds up inside the bathroom, you can have the vent turn on and off automatically. And again, you'll notice this is all done through MQTT receives and sends without using Home Assistant being a middleman. So one question I got quite a bit was, how do I reuse something in Node-RED without doing a copy and paste and it just seems inefficient of putting things double into Node-RED? One use case would be, say for instance, you had different lighting scenes that you would like to change. Certain lights that'll go off when you go away or certain lights that go off when you're at night. And you have multiple flows that may call those instead of copying and pasting those which does create an issue in the future when you add or remove or change lights you have to change that in all those different flows so what we're going to do is we're only going to show it in one place where we can just reuse that flow of lights and that way we only have to maintain one list of lights. so what we're doing here is we have the ring led topic and the blue led topic and we have some change nodes of set off and set on so what we can do is if you use the link and you paste a link into it and we'll call it away lights
We'll paste in another one. We'll call it home lights. And we'll deploy it. Now inside the same flow or tab, you can call these multiple times and it draws a dashed line to it. But you can even do another tab, which is a different flow in their terms. You can drag out an inject node just so we can make an easy action on it for the sake of the video. Because in your case, you'd probably do a presence detection or some other action that happens when you get home or leave, or it might be based on time as well. So we'll call the link output. We'll tie these together. And it wants to know which one are you linking to. And it shows it's on flow one. We're going to link it to away lights. And it doesn't show the name there. But what you can do, because you know, Node Red's a visual, you can add a comment. We'll do away lights. We'll drag out another inject. We'll do a link output. I'm going to link that to home lights. Link them up. Copy our comment. We'll call it home lights. And that way you can just continue to use these links in all your various flows, and then you can just call your all your lights and continue to list them here as you add, remove, or change lights. And as some lights, they may be only available through Home Assistant. They may not be lights that you can tie in through Node Red, through MQTT. So you can just continue to change them and modify them here, and you'll never have to go back to your other flows and continue to maintain all these multiple lists of lights, which can become a pain. So once we deploy it, and you click away, runs through this link and comes back into this one here and sets the off and pushes that to the blue and the ring LED. Now if we do the timestamp of here, that turns them both back on and it links back through. That way you can just reuse your list of lights. Thanks for watching the third episode of the Node Red Basics with Home Assistant. Appreciate all the comments and support. Make sure and subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can catch our next video. If you want to see any additional Node Red videos and additional pieces of Node Red, be sure and comment below on different pieces that you'd like to see covered in the next video. And y'all take care.